Welcome everybody back to Questions and Answers Episode 5 And I uh, just want to jump in the beginning here and say sorry <laughs> uh, This show is supposed to be about every month, every 6 weeks around there uh, But apparently, I was just double checking and it looks like I've been slacking And I've uh, taken a little bit longer than I should to get... Uh, this video out to you guys. So, uh, what we're doing here is, uh, if you've never seen these questions and answers series or anything, all it is is me drawing, working on whatever. Usually it's a recorded version and it's sped up so there's at least something to watch if you want to watch something. If not, you can just listen to this in the background. They tend to be a little bit beefier of episodes, uh, but they're a real treat for me to do. And I th the reply I'm get or response I'm getting from you guys and you girls out there is, uh, it's been very positive. So, thank you for that. Um, so what I do is I just go through all the videos from my last questions and answers uh, video all the way up to whatever the current one is. I believe it's a live stream recording. And I just go through and see if there's any questions, put it in a little uh, Word document over here that I got on the side, and I'm just going to read them off and go. Now, what might get a little weird is I'm going to be drawing in real time here. This is a page for uh, Worlds in Peril uh, that I'm going to be inking. And uh, actually, it's funny because I'll just jump into that real quick before we like some process stuff I guess before we get into the questions but um, I tried to jump back into uh, Photoshop uh, just to try some things out uh, and uh, I have had some mixed results it brings me back to my first days of doing digital that's <laughs> that's for sure uh, I still highly recommend the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics that's what the, the method and the workflow is here uh, so there's some things I'm going on you know the backgrounds are pretty uh, they look pretty fake uh, I'm gonna hopefully go in there and address that and jazz them up but uh, I had done a lot of work on the standard a project before this just working this before going into Manga Studio um, the reason I wanted to jump into here is I found a way to uh, make a thick outliner on the character like just by pressing a function key now I might make a video for that separately that has no place in this uh, I just wanted to bring it up because normally, or at least you guys have been seeing me, if you haven't been able to attend the live streams anyway, I'm usually in Manga Studio. And uh, there's one other process I'm going to try and then start to settle in on a uh, little, something that feels like, you know what, let's just make this home, let's just own this sort of thing as opposed to bouncing around software. Not that that's not a bad thing, but that could be a whole other topic we could talk about. But So now you guys know what I'll be working on here, uh, just the sort of stuff. Uh, I'll probably start with this character here. Um, let me just turn off this this garbage here. Uh, make sure I got my brush. It's all good to go. Yeah, there we go. Some nice inky inky. All right. So before I jump into the questions, the very last thing I will say to you guys is if you had a question or something that you might ask me to address, if I could help you out, I would love to do so. Ask it in the comment bar below. Uh, this is the first video that I will look for the next video. And like I said, every four to six weeks, ideally, is what I'm looking to take to answer them. Uh, so hopefully you won't have to wait too long. So, first video, or the first uh, questions and answers, episode four question that I'll be answering uh, is by Kyle Reed. And Kyle asks, I've recently started my own indie comic. Well, congratulations, bud. And looking at my work, I'm unsure whether I'm actually a big fan of my own style of drawing or inking. I know everyone's their own worst critic, but something just doesn't feel right when comparing to other art. So two questions, really. Should you stick with your own natural style, or is it okay to deviate by copying other artists' styles? And if your style... Oh, sorry. And is your style something that changes as you progress, or is it it for you? Something that has stayed pretty much the same, like everyone's style of handwriting, for example. Uh, okay, well, thanks, Kyle. Now, I'm going to start drawing while I'm talking here, okay? And this could turn into a mixed bunch of things. I could really lose track. Let's hope for the best. We're all going to try some stuff. So, again, thanks, Kyle. Um, I want to get you to check out a good buddy of mine, Will Robson. I believe his channel is Robson Inc. R-O-B-S-O-N-I-N-K. He actually has a video. It's a really good video, too, on uh, YouTube, talking about how to develop your own style. And he sort of goes into, uh, you know, the what he did and what he does um, to get better at drawing and to just sort of figure out what is his style. And it's funny. It's what he talks about in there is all you really need to kind of get started. Uh, but that doesn't sound necessarily like what you're asking. Uh, but it's a great video. I think everybody should read it regardless. 
a lot of good things to get out of that. Now, talking about should you just draw the way you would naturally draw, or would you start copying other people's to get your style? Now, I don't know of too many people that just always drew their own way. Uh, so let's. I'm gonna always come a, come at this stuff from a comic book perspective. Okay, if you're drawing comic books, there's a I would probably say a 99% chance that you read comic books at some point. At some point in your life, you were introduced to a comic book. And that's what got you into digging comic books, right? If you watched a cartoon show and you just loved that cartoon show, you probably really loved animation, you know? Or you wanted to tell stories that were similar to what were being told in uh, those cartoons. For me, Ninja Turtles was massive. Power Rangers, not really a cartoon, but it's a kid show. Awesome. That changed so much of like what I enjoyed and what I would uh, look for in my content. And still today, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, nobody will ever really, nobody can tell that I'm being, that I'm pulling inspiration from other things that I, I think anyway, uh, just because of, I liked Power Rangers when I was younger. Uh, but in saying all that, it's really a long winded way of just saying, I think your style comes from looking at other people's stuff. You have to draw other people's art in order to break it down, to understand it, and then start making it yours. Uh, perfect example, I think everybody recommends Andrew Loomis whenever you want to learn anatomy. Uh, if it wasn't Loomis, it's probably somebody else, Bern Hogarth, George Bridgman. It's, it's somebody. I, I highly doubt that you just learn anatomy because you you just draw anatomy like that. You might be one of them, a few of a million that actually do that, uh, but most people, they look to a book to study. Now, by default, just doing that, that means that you are now copying that artist's style. Everybody draws like Loomis. Everybody draws like George Bridgman, you know, draws like these people. But that's not the case, right? You'll look at a whole bunch of people. You might look at my stuff. You might look at your own stuff. And even if you drew from Loomis, and as you look at it, you don't see Loomis at all. You don't see Bridgman. You don't see these guys. Because what you're doing is you're compounding what you like and then making it your own. I think that's what the style is about. If you really want to just style, I, I would just say right now, forget style. Stop looking at your art and going like, oh, it's not cool enough. I wish, I wish things were just better. Those are all things that as you draw and as you draw more, it's all going to get better. It, it, that's just the way it goes. You're going to find shorthand ways of drawing. And shorthand ways... You'd be surprised to actually start turning into like a, you're known for that sort of stuff. It's a style. Um, getting locked up on like how do I get a style and stuff is probably the worst thing you could do, in my opinion, uh, as an artist. Because what that does is it handicaps you into never being ready or never really producing anything until you find that style. Which is a load of crap because you've, as long as you're drawing, you're drawing. There's bound to be somebody that likes your stuff. And if you're drawing for other people, you're probably drawing for the wrong reason. Uh, and just to highlight one other thing, if a client has paid you, okay, a client has asked you to do work, they like your style. They like how you're currently drawing. Don't change it. You could be like me and just start changing as you work. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but I have this, I, I get this kick out of always changing my approach to the to a book while I'm doing that book multiple times. So like this story here, I did, I started in Manga Studio five, 4, uh, then I went back to Manga Studio 5, now I'm in Photoshop for a page. Now, as long as it doesn't look different art-wise, nobody's really going to be able to tell too much. You'd be surprised what you can kind of get away with. Uh, and the more that you draw, the more your personal style and these little experiments that you're doing, they, they're not as massive anymore, and your style will just always shine through. Um, so let me just double check here. Uh, da, 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 da. So two questions. Should you stick with your own natural style or is it okay to deviate by copying other artists? Um, so just to package that up, I am a big believer in copying other people's stuff. They've found solutions uh, that could take you days, years uh, to figure out. If you like hands from an artist, copy the hands out of them. Like on study time don't be copying them in your production work that's that's where the problem comes in when you study and when you're just practicing on your own that's when you're copying and you're having you just have fun with it just go like one of the favorite things i love to do and i'm just getting back into it again is doing just what you're asking is a study 
study sessions. Sitting down for like a half hour, ten minutes a night, and just grabbing like uh, Joe Matarera is one of my favorite artists, period. Um, if it wasn't for him in a book called Battle Chasers, uh, I don't know if I would have really, you know, I, I was reading Spawn and things at the time, but it was th that book that really made it go, wow, it's like a video game book. <laughs> And I was huge in a video game, still sort of am, and uh, it just changed a lot of what made comics really cool to me. Uh, I know that has nothing to do with this, but it was that style. And what I would do is I would sit down and I would draw each page of those comic books. So, just to back it up, what I'm doing now is I'll grab a, a, that same book, Battle Chasers, I'll open it up and, wow, I really love that werewolf, and I'll draw that werewolf. That's just for me. And when it comes time, time to do your production work... This is where your style comes in. It's because everybody pulls like, just say you and I sat down and it was like, we want to draw like Jim Lee, Frank Frazetta. And we study them both for a week. And then we come down and it's like, okay, guys, we want you to draw Tarzan fighting Batman. Uh, just one page. Same angles with both of us. It's the exact same layout. All it is is our rendering, our shadows and stuff. Guaranteed to be different. That's you coming through. And that's the stuff that you would never want to lose. You don't want to just copy people and then become a uh, a clone or a, what's what's the other word people call them? Um, it might just be clone. My brain's in a billion different places here while I'm drawing and talking to you. But uh, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be. Oh look, it's just another Jim Lee clone. You, it it might sound cool to be compared to that guy, but you know I think it's a better compliment if people start saying, "Wow, it looks like you've kind of got some Jim Lee stuff to your art. Looks great." That sort of thing. Not, oh, wow, that totally looks like Jim Lee. Because that's your own style coming through with all the reference and study that you've done. And for your second one, uh, have I stayed in my style? Like, have I found it? And I'm, that's just what I do? No, I'm always changing. I'm always trying to. Now, you guys might look at it and go, it's just, oh, that looks like Jonathan Rector stuff. You know? And that's cool. If I can be identified like that, that's, hey, awesome. Uh, that means people can at least recognize my art, uh, which is good. But uh, I still feel like I'm, uh, I'm getting closer, but I'm still not where I want to be. And that's right now. There was a time when everything was gravy, everything was flowing, I was knocking stuff out. Uh, but as time went on, it was like, all right, I'm kind of getting draw. I'm getting, it's starting to get tired to just draw in this one style all the time. And that style was mostly, and it might look like it still right now, is like, uh, in my mind, the old Marvel the 90s Marvel style. Uh, there's a few artists, obviously, that still draw on that, and I like it. It's all heavily rendered and stuff, but it's just, I don't know. At the day and time and the year that we live in right now, the amount of artists that I've seen since, you know, just being introduced to comics that way, my, my tastes uh, have changed big time. Getting back into manga or anime is, is a huge thing, too. Just trying to incorporate that sort of stuff is going, uh, it's going huge. Um, so anyway, on to the next one. Uh, so this question uh, from the same video is from Sujad Ali. You mentioned near the middle of the video answering the 11 year old's question about understanding and practicing basic fundamentals. Some I know, such as anatomy, shading proportions, but what else is there and is it better to look at certain ones simultaneously? Also, how can I practice them? Anything like artists, works of works or books would you recommend uh, there's quite a bit of questions here so let me just see if I can answer that one uh, so you're talking about the fundamentals such as anatomy shading proportions and stuff uh, you know everything I do comes from a comic book perspective so if you're doing comic books you need to be able to draw everything shading rendering cars ponies sewers grandma cooking eggs you know whatever a whole bunch of stuff uh, because you never know what you're going to get. You never know what your uh, writer is going to give you. Or if you're working for yourself, you know, there might be a joke that you need to do or or uh, something. You just need to be able to draw everything. But uh, there's few artists that I know of that draw phenomenal everythings. Uh, there's usually pretty good things that people are good at drawing. And they stick to that. So if you're good at drawing superheroes, probably just stick with drawing superhero style books. There's nothing... Nothing wrong with being good at what you're drawing. Um, for fundamentals, I mean, you pretty much nailed it right there. There's 
when it comes to like fundamentals could be anything right like what do you is it just figure work that you're trying to do is it uh, structure is it anatomy architecture perspective you know like there's so many different things uh, I'm going to assume it's coming from what I think most people get into comic books for which is superheroes uh, at least in the west it's not entirely true but uh, there's a lot of superhero love and everybody likes really kick-ass anatomy and dynamic perspective and stuff like that uh, so your fundamentals there uh, I don't know if there's really any books it's all covered in like anatomy books uh, just don't be looking at, and this is just my opinion, I, I don't find a lot of value in looking at, like, scientifically structured anatomy books. That's pretty, like, I don't really care if you stripped away the flesh off of somebody, and that's exactly how their muscles look. Um, when I got introduced to George Bridgman, uh, at first I didn't know what to make of him because I'm, I came from a, a, a Loomis background. And Bridgman, his people, they don't necessarily look great, but in that, anyway, in that book, he shows you how these, like how a muscle folds, and if like you were to, if you were to right now pick up a weight and just flex it like a, a barbell curl, your muscle changes the way it looks. And it was the first book that I had seen where it addressed muscles changing the way they look. Because if you look at those scientific anatomy books and stuff like that, what they'll show you is when you strip away the flesh, this is what a bicep looks like. But what does a bicep look when it's flexed? You know, these books don't show you this. At least the ones that I was looking at didn't. Um, so what ends, what ends up happening is you start doing things like this, where every arm is like teardrop shape at the shoulder, and your biceps are always like pinch points. You know, they all like, everything starts doing this sort of weird look. Everything's kind of like coming in. And I mean, styles are styles, but like George Bridgman, he would be like, no, okay, so your shoulder, it's its broken into, into, into chunks. It's like a shape, you know? Just put it in perspective. So that's a shoulder there. And your, and your bicep, it's, it's a shape too. Right? And your tricep, right? And it's like everything starts getting real chunky real quick. But what do these chunks do? They show you planes. They show you shapes, right? So when an arm is coming out this way, that shoulder, you can remember certain things, right? Like the planes of it. So it's coming up. And your bicep gets really stretched out. But if it's perfectly straight, like your tricep would just pop right out because it's the one that's actually pulling those muscles straight now like it's really dirty compared to like this sort of thing but this sort of stuff this is the things that hopefully once you learn them or at least understand the concept or at least have it brought up to you like if this was the first time that idea was brought in your head just by listening to this then good because that's at least putting it in the back of your head so the next time you draw like this character here that's why I have all these lines up here because that I want all that fabric to be tight that's a bicep that's popping underneath there, right? Same with here. Like, look, it's boom, it's popping up. This side of the tricep's pretty straight. You don't need to worry about that stuff, okay? Um, also, is it important to draw whatever you want and see how to apply these skills instead of just solely practicing anatomy from shading? Yes. Uh, there needs to be a time for um, what I like to call study and then play. I like to keep... Uh, not so much anymore, but back in the day when I was really, really sinking down and putting a lot of hours into my art, uh, and it's taken a huge hit now uh, because I'm just I'm I'm working in art now, right? Like I, I make concept art and uh, doing comic books and stuff like that. It's hard to find the time like we like I used to do uh, to do all this art. But I always had two different um, sketchbooks with me, and one of them was for study. And one of them was for play. And the study one was, all right, let's grab Bridgman again or Loomis or let's, you know, grab Joe Mad or whoever, whatever artist I liked at the time. And that's all I'm drawing in there. The other one was, you know, as gross as it might sound, I, I recommend it. Bring a sketchbook into the bathroom. I know guys tend to spend more uh, time in the bathroom. <laughs> and I don't mean to get real gross on you, but, you know, some people read. Some people just play on their phone. Bring like a small sketchbook with a pencil and just knock out some funny faces or draw Spider-Man, draw Superman. Just think. Let You're not showing anybody. It's just for you. Just draw stuff. And what that does is it just lets your mind 
apply all that kick-ass studying you've been doing, all that, all those hours you're sinking away by yourself, just trying to figure things out. That's the time to actually go in there and just be like, th that's the fruit of your labor, in my opinion. Because when a client comes up to you and goes, hey, I need you to draw, like in this case, this this picture here, we got this character uh, fighting somebody. Now, it's a cool fight. I love fights. I love to come up with this sort of thing. But it's not my guys. You know, it's not my characters. It's somebody else's stuff. And I still appreciate it, and I love working, working with clients and working with uh, other people to do this sort of thing. But I got a script for this, and yeah, the script said, you know, or the script didn't necessarily say this, but uh, I'm at a point now where I'm pretty sure there's like a, uh, an understanding with professionals, uh, depends who you work with, but at least the cats I'm working with, where they're like, okay, if I needed to change a panel or two, if it's for the better, do it. Um, but I still get a script, right, where I didn't come up with it in my head, so I still, there's still some restrictions as to what I can do. I can't just have free form sketchbook playtime in this sort of thing, right? Whereas that's what your that's what your sketchbook lets you do, man. Like how cool does that sound? Your, that your sketchbook lets you draw whatever the hell you want. You don't have to draw big elaborate comic book pages, right? Just draw stuff. And what that's gonna do is, uh, you know, I'm beating a dead horse with it, but it just puts all that stuff you've been studying into practice. And you don't even really notice it. Like, you don't even really realize it. But by doing that, uh, you'll probably see bigger gains quicker, if you ask me. Definitely keep doing the studies. And and when I say do studies, that could be anything. That could be spending an hour and just grabbing a Michelangelo scul sculpture, print it out or have it, and just draw that for an hour. I used to do stuff like that, too. And just to just to try it doing still life like it's boring as hell i don't i don't enjoy fine art stuff i really don't um i can appreciate it and i i enjoy the work that went into it and how real it can look and it might make you think it's stuff but i don't want to draw fine art that's to me that's so boring but that's just my that's me right but there was times when I would grab like Michelangelo Leonardo those kinds of guys and just try to draw some of the stuff they were doing just because just to try it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't really do it that much. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing it. But I was just trying to get hungry and start going like, is there things I can pull from other artists and stuff? Uh, so, so have the two two sketchbooks. You'll probably see a big improvement in your stuff soonish. You know, know that you're going into art for your life, <laughs> and you might not ever get as good as you want to be. Um, but that's it's fun. It's a fun little fun little thing. Uh, sorry for bombarding you, your, uh, but your advice would be much appreciated. Oh, no problem. Uh, oh, looks like you snuck in a couple other questions there. Um, by the way, I don't do digital art um, as I would like to get better at traditional. Plus, I feel I like the feel of pencil and paper. So if you could tell tell the answers to that. Uh, okay, so hopefully this still the same things I said apply there. Uh, I will say for some people that don't like working on tablets on a computer, if you have a Cintiq or not a Cintiq, sorry, uh, uh, like a Intuos or a bamboo or anything like that. You can just check out videos on YouTube. I've tried it. I like it. I've, I'm used to the slippery surface now. But you can grab like Bristol. You can grab paper and just grab some non-adhesive tape and just stick it to your tablet and draw. And it gives you that tactile feeling. And uh, some people actually dig it. So give it a shot. Uh, and one last question here. <laughs> Also, I find it hard to draw, say, a person's head and features on the face on paper when I'm drawing the head to toe, and I want them to only cover, say, a third and a half of an A4. I don't, A4, I think that's 11 by 17. Can't figure out how to detail placement, size, whatever. Is any good ways to learn to practice? Um... Uh, So it sounds like what you're doing is you're still stuck on doing this. Let me just get it here. So uh, I'm just going to assume it's 11 by 17. So if that's your paper here, uh, you're saying two thirds. So we'll say right here is where you want to be drawing. And what you're doing is when you're drawing the head and the toe, uh, let me just reread it there. When I'm drawing them head to toe, I want them to only cover, say, a third. Okay, so it sounds like you'll have, you won't put your guide in. That might be your problem. So you'll start drawing a head. You're like okay, and you want to have, you want a full body to be in there. And what ends up happening is like as you start drawing, you're you're getting, and all of a sudden it's like ah oh, crap. Now you're the whole thing. Uh, if that's the case, the easiest solution to this, and I highly recommend everybody do this, even if you don't do it right now, start doing it. <laughs> 
figure out where things are supposed to go, right? So if, maybe it's two panel page. You got panel one and panel two, and you just want I don't know why you'd ever have a character just standing the whole way, but you got a character standing the whole way. Maybe they're walking down a hallway or something. Do that. That's it. That that's it. This is your shape of your person that's just standing there. You can do it this way. Do whatever you want. Just mark like this. And by doing this, you know right away that's all you have to work in. And you start to learn as you do this how you can do it. Like you might get stuck and go like, all right, so head right here. You're doing a lot of circle action. And okay, so we got torso. Like I can already tell you right here, look, hips. We haven't even hit knees yet, right? There's a lot of problems going on here. But as soon as you have this, you can start to figure things out, right? Like little specs. Okay, so we got some feet. I got a head somewhere in here. We're gonna, and you just start scribbling and finding things out in the middle, and you know, like, okay, so if the middle's about the hips, that means we're gonna put our chest up here. We got the head here, pelvis, knees, and like, okay, okay. So now you're starting to see the character, right? You can start building in shapes and getting unique stuff. But that's that's what I would do. That's what I still do. Let's just say the scene here was um, Batman drop kicking some thugs in the face. I would never. And this is the room I have. I would never go like this. Okay, so we got Batman's head. I want his. I want his foot coming right at us, like right here. All right. So I'm gonna go. All right. So here's his chest, his hips, and his his le Oh man, I'm out of the page because of that. Never ever start with a head when you're when you're laying out. Right. Do what I do. What you just saw me do here. Okay. So we got Batman, and I need him coming here. We got a foot. Uh, probably a guy who's right here is getting hit. Probably got some other guys coming at him like this. So what you're doing is you're working on a bunch of things, not just figure placement, but composition, right? Like I could see a strong composition here. We got a character here, Batman, eyes leading you this way because he's getting, he's kicking, and you got all these other dudes, thugs or whatever. They're all like just ghosts, you know, ghost shapes coming after Batman, right? And once you have that, that's that's it. You you've got it all, you know. Let me just sort of roughly clean this up, and then you just start figuring things out. Like okay, I know I need a big it's a big Batman boot, so maybe I just want to... It's an old Jack Kirby thing that I've heard anyway. Is you just put like a giant object in the foreground. And then you just start figuring it out after there. So look at that. We'll go big old friggin' calf. Again, some serious perspective stuff here. And I know, like, keep it sloppy. You know, figure it out as you're going. Maybe he's got his big cape too. You can start putting guys up there. But that's what you're trying to do is just scribble in where these people are supposed to go and just keep building it up. Just keep building it up. And a scribble costs no time. A scribble is easy to erase. And a scribble is so low maintenance that you should be able to just scribble out an entire comic book. Scribble out an entire piece. You, you, your brain will thank you for it. <laughs> your eraser will thank you for it. thank you for it too. Okay, so on to the next question by Miss Otaku Killer. Hey Jonathan, I'm 19, about to be uh, 20, and I've tried to make a comic for the last six years now. Wow. So since you were 13, 14, you've been trying to make a comic book. Sounds like me. <laughs> uh, I have no problem thinking of a plot line, character design, or have much trouble with writing a script. So right now, the only thing I'm noticing is the drawing part. So let's see what she says. Uh, but each time I sit down to do the actual pages, I clamp up. I can't make it past my first page because I have no idea which direction I should take this in. Do you have any tips uh, to keep my mind clear once I actually get to drawing the pages? Well, Miss Otaku Killer, I can say right now, congratulations on at least achieving the other half of making a comic book. Uh, myself, I get stuck in what you're able to do. Um, I have a bunch of ideas like every other creative person on this planet and I sit down and I say, you know, oh yeah, I can't wait to draw this and all that fun stuff. Um, but when it comes time to write the script down, that's when I start to just go, ugh, right? Like it's not art for me. It's, do I need a script? Can I just do like the old Marvel method where I just draw once I have like a, a sentence idea of what the story is going to be and then just kind of go in there. You know what I mean? Like, you're thinking way too much and that might be what uh, or I'm thinking way too much and that might be what you're doing uh, what I would recommend and I'm trying I'm trying very hard to sneak in a few minutes here and there to get these videos out to you guys sorry just let me take a quick drink of coffee 
uh, is just do a mini comic. This this beautiful idea you have that you've been working on for the last six years, just put it to the side. Don't get rid of it. Just put it to the side for now. You know you can go back to it, and you're, it's exciting to go back to it, right? But right now, just do it for me. Do it for do it for your friend Jonathan. Just <laughs> do it for me. Show it to me too when you're done. I want everybody to start doing this stuff. And when these videos come out, it's it's going to help you guys. And don't just wait for me to do it. There's tons of resources online uh, that can teach you guys doing that. And all it is is a mini comic, okay? Now, I again, I I can I already, I already heard either the grumbles coming from you guys or, or your eyes rolling like uh, mini comic. Here we go. Here he goes again. I, I'm trying to give you guys vitamins right here, okay? I'm trying to give you guys a little a pick me up. Once you do a mini comic, your expectations for comics, your experience for comics, your drive, your adrenaline. All of that stuff, through the roof. Absolutely through the roof. Even if it turns out shit. Because what you're doing is you're going through... A mini-comic forces you to go through the entire comic book making process with no restrictions and no weights. As in like what you just said there, uh, Otaku. Where it's like, you know, maybe you get locked up because you're like, is this a webcomic? Oh, jeez. How, how am I going to make a webcomic? Uh, is is this going to be traditional print? Is this... Uh, you know, like, you're thinking of things that have nothing to do with the comic book. You're thinking of things that require a comic book, and then you don't even start. Right? But with a mini-comic, it's just for you. Uh, I'll tell you right now. You want to sell it? You're on Facebook? You're on Twitter? You can print it out. You can go to your local... Staples or Kinkos or whatever the wherever you are where you're at where there's a photocopier and photocopy it for like 10 cents 25 cents and then fold it and staple it and then ask people for a dollar plus a stamp done done and I'll guarantee you you're probably not going to sell any but you might and if you do thumbs up if you don't doesn't matter that's not what you're doing this for you you shouldn't be doing this for money uh, it's, it'd be nice to make this your living admirable goal and everybody should be able to do that at some point in your life, please strive to do so. But this is more of just for you. This is again, you know what I just talked about uh, doing sketchbooks. You got you got one for study and you got one for uh, play. That's exactly what this is. Well, it's it's both actually. <laughs> it is study and it is play. No, no, it's play. It's play. All the studying you've done, all the reading of comic books you've done already, that's getting you ready to do your own, right? That's why you're excited. So. Really quickly, um, I think, I'm just trying to go off the top of my head. If you go to my website, uh, is it my website? No, it's my, where is it? On YouTube. I think it's 24-hour comic book day. Just give those a watch. It's not exciting. It's not amazing. But I, I basically show you how I came up with a rough idea for a script and then what I did from there. And that's all you got to do, guys. Just copy a story. Copy a script. Look online right now. Type in, like, I don't know. Type in Spider-Man script, and you're, you're going to get one. You're, I don't care who wrote it, okay? You're going to get it. And all you got to do is take, just do three pages for now. Three pages, just do that. Don't worry about format or size. Maybe just sell it on the line. Just make it for free for people. Whatever you got to do. And just take that Spider-Man script and change the hero to somebody else. Make it. Make your own. Make Elephant Man. Make... Just whatever you like, okay? Just steal a script <laughs> and just make it your own, okay? This probably shouldn't be sold then if you're going to be stealing scripts. But I just want you to get started. And once you start doing this mini comic stuff, like you're going to see right away what it takes to do a comic book. You're going to see why, what are, what is the reasons why you can't do it? Is it you're not ready? You don't think you're ready? You can't draw? You, you, you can't draw is that that can't be the excuse I can't I can't imagine a single person uh, coming to me saying hey Jonathan I want to do comics but like I sit down to draw and I just can't I can't draw maybe I'm not ready yet maybe my skills aren't ready enough that's a load of horse shit you're ready you're ready right now if you're watching this stuff you've got to be an artist I can't imagine hey if you're not an artist you're watching this how's it going you want to be an artist pick up a pencil join us it's awesome it's the best thing ever <laughs> we need more artists Okay, help us, help us, help us be artists. Help us artists grow. If you are an artist and you're watching this, hell yeah. Keep it going, just draw, you can draw. You don't draw like Jim Lee. I'm just using that because it's a buzzword. <laughs> you can't draw like Jim Lee, you can't draw like me, you can't draw like the people you look up to. Okay. So that means you can't draw ever or anything worthwhile? Come on, 
You know the answer. Don't be your worst enemy here, guys. If you don't got your own back, like, no stranger's going to have it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let yourself get in your own head. Just make comics. And you're if you if you're afraid, like, yeah, okay. So let's be honest. Maybe you just draw stick figures. There's a web comic XKCD. It's it's not awesome because it's stick figures. It's awesome because it's a brilliant comic book. But that's it shows you that it like art doesn't matter in comics. It depends who you talk to. But if that's what's holding you back, then come on. You you deserve to be drawn comic books right now. Just do it. Just get out of your head. Make shit. <laughs> Just give yourself that freedom. Be okay with making nothing. Be okay with making a book and going... And you know, like, you know, my dialogue <laughs> It is abysmal. Or, oh, God, did you... Like, the plot in my story was like... it was It was garbage. It was real bad. Who cares? Who cares? Just keep making stuff. If you're always waiting for perfection, you're never going to get nothing. You're always going to be stuck making garbage. You you're always going to overanalyze everything you do and that and I I I'm only saying this in like real talk with you guys here cuz like I'm in the same boat. I get I beat myself up all the time where it's how come I I haven't started a project yet because well the script's not done yet and you know and when I talk to you guys like this Again, like I try to say, we're real talk here with you. Just like it's it's beating stuff into my own head that I need to do as well, and it's it. I know it works because I've seen it in other areas of my life too. But it's just make your comic book. Don't worry about why you're sitting down. Don't put a fear into it. Don't don't build it up to anything. It's not. It's only. It's actually not your friend, right? It's 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 preventing you from getting anything done, and that's not good. That's not good. The other side of it might be maybe you don't want to draw comics. You know, maybe drawing is what you want to do. Maybe you just want to write. That that could be a possibility too. You know, I, I think you just need to think about it and just be honest with yourself. But I, I don't know. I I really don't think that's what's holding you back here. I, I think it's you're probably just comparing yourself to other people and you're not liking the results that you're getting or like maybe what you're doing just. <sighs> You know it could be better if you just... If I could just draw for another six years, you know? Like, I'll be awesome by then. So maybe I just need to do some studying and figuring out a style. You know, all this stuff. And that's true. That's all true. But what sounds better? Waiting six years to get this one story down once you find that style or that certain art that you draw to tell that story and doing nothing except studying or studying and knocking out a comic book once a year I know which one I like and I still don't do it it's something I want to do I want to knock out a comic book a year and keep studying that's what I want to do I don't want to keep studying and waiting until a project comes along where it's now that's the fit that doesn't make any sense So, I mean, I don't want to go all Tony Robbins and, like, <laughs> personal motivator on you, but just, for me, just just draw. And we're, just to bring it down full circle here, the mini-comic thing, what's cool about that is if you treat it as just, like, a, a thing, right? Like, uh, the Castle Dracula thing that I'll be doing to show with you guys for the, um, what's it called, mini-comic thing. It is literally that. It's a character. I just just do a fight scene. That's what I want to draw a fight scene. I do. Do I care if you guys or anybody else reads and go? You know, the motivations of the main character they weren't really established. If the main character dies, we'll say. So I'm reading, and the main character's dead. Like I wasn't emotionally attached, so I didn't feel anything for. It. Who cares? That's not the point. You're gonna get better as you go. You have to get better as you go. I've never seen anybody start something and get worse. Except unless you did drugs. And even drugs is like a temporary awesomeness. Unless you're just one of those... I, like, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. It's like I'm just trying to find an excuse where not doing something is its temporarily okay. It's not. You're either living or you're dying. You're either moving or you're dying. You're either moving forward and creating stuff or you're creating nothing. And it'd be a shame. I mean, if you got the balls to ask a question to somebody of what can I do to draw, you know right now you're ready. You're good to go. You're asking questions about how can you make more? How can you how can you keep making more stuff? And that's the good stuff. That's the sort of stuff that you can't really 
train into people. That's the stuff that where people go like, well, you know what? I'm not good enough, so I'm just not even going to try. Part of my friendship, but fuck that. You do not want to be in that boat. You do not want to be in that boat. Just saying, you know what? I gave it a go for a few years, and ugh, I'm done. I, I tried it, and it didn't work out. Like, come on. You're better than Don't you deserve better than that? You're going to give up on your own dreams? Nobody else cares about your dreams, you know? Like, And this might start getting gross and sounding bad, but I just got to say it. Nobody gives a shit about your dreams but you. You might have a significant other, a family member, somebody that they want you to succeed. They want the best for you. They want, they want all your ideas to come out and share with the world. They just want you to be happy. That's it. They just want you to be happy. They don't give a shit about how you get there as long as you're healthy and everything you're doing is not destroying yourself. They want you just to be happy. Just like you want your fan, from friends and family to be happy. You know, you might have a brother or sister that does something unrelated to you. Maybe they sell cars. And you don't, you might, I'll just speak for myself. I, you don't give a shit of how they sell cars. I just, and what, oh wow, you sold a thousand cars? Cool. Like, I don't care. But when they talk to me, if they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, so I'm going to be maybe going on a trip or you can see it and you're like, good for you, you know. That's what I want. I want you guys. I want you to be happy. Yeah, all that hard work you're doing, those thousand, you know, cars. Sweet, good for you. Good job. I want you to. If that's what makes you happy and you keep doing it, do it. Kick its ass every time. That's what I want. I don't care about that. So what I'm saying about your dreams, like if your dreams is to make comic books, nobody cares. <laughs> so if you stop caring on yourself about that, oh, you're done. Oh, oh, you are done. You know, you're just going to be that broken record talking over and over again saying, and, and I'm just saying this because I'm like this too, guys, okay? And this is what I want to change and what I'm working on for myself, which is stop talking, more doing. You know, to putting videos on YouTube, doing this sort of stuff with you guys, I love. You guys are awesome. You guys, se secretly, you have no idea what you guys have done for me in the background. Um, there's been a couple moments over the last few years where it's just life was not very good, okay? And it not that it wasn't good in like a I'm living on the streets or just emotional and, and things where maybe, you know, like, maybe art's not where it need like maybe this isn't what I need to be doing, you know? Maybe it is just concept art and just stuff like that. But when I get a message from time to time or when I start doing things like this and I get a question uh, like you asked, uh, Mr. Taco Killer, where it's, do you have any tips to keep your mind clear once I actually get to drawing the pages? It's this. Just draw. It's always as simple as that. It's always as simple as that. Uh, my buddy Will and I, we were just talking uh, earlier this week, I believe. Um, I'm, I'm starting to get up early, like I told you guys, like around 4 or 5 a.m., just so that I can squeeze in some extra time to do uh, this project here because I'm actually behind, which I'm always behind on projects. Again, more things I'm trying to improve. <laughs> But uh, he was just telling me, uh, and if you're listening to Will, hope you're doing well, is that he's getting into a point now where it's, he calls them little art breakthroughs. And I think we all have them from time to time. And what it is, is it's just he's getting comfortable in his art. He's liking what he's able to do now. Not that he didn't before, but we, I, I hope you guys experience this at least once in your life. If you haven't, uh, you're probably not pushing hard enough to draw and you will do it one day but you just start drawing and things like man i can draw whatever i want right now how cool is that it might not be as rendered or it might not come out as awesome as like i want to draw dragons yeah okay that idea is awesome but then when i sit down to draw a dragon it's like you know well that's not the best dragon i've seen skyrim dragons are still cooler or i can go over and pick up like the dungeons and dragon manual and those dragons are cooler <laughs> right but you can still draw a dragon, and it's those little things where if you can find yourself getting improvement, it helps in a whole bunch of areas. It just beefs things up. Anyway, I'm, I've, wow, this is a big ramble. Just please, guys, keep making stuff. Help me, help you, and you help me. Just being help motivate each other just to it, – it's seriously – oh, sorry, that's where it was. Uh, I got off my own head here uh, where Will was saying where it was – and it, this is why it's it's paramount, is that it was, all it is is just drawing. That's all you ever have to do. If you want to do anything art-related, draw, 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 draw. There's nothing else. There's zero things else. If all you did was lived in your house and you didn't network and you didn't um, go to comic book conventions and you just draw, 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 post online so people know who you are at least. Posting, because we're artists, we like to share. 
some stuff, and you're posting, drawing, posting, drawing, draw, draw, eventually you're going to get work from something. Now, if you go and start doing networking and things, you might get better paying work with high, more high-profile people, but you don't need to do that to get better and to do what you want. If you just want to draw comics, draw comics. And if, if you're getting stuck at sitting down going, I can't do it, then take on a simpler project. If you're working for yourself, you guys have no idea what level of freedom you have. You might. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but you have a massive amount of freedom. You can create a story and just draw it. You don't need a writer to help you. So if you're afraid to get started on something, just make a fun side project. Maybe if you, like, if you feel like you're wasting time too, pick a character in that book. And I love doing this. This is something that's like a writing exercise. But it's put that character into a problem and get them out in three pages. Just three. That's it. Pick your main character. Put him in a room with a giant, uh, pff, I don't know, sword snake monster that plays bongos and puts people to sleep. And then when they're asleep, he takes out a giant guitar and flies away on, I don't know, make it up. It doesn't matter. Just make a three-page book of how that character gets it out just to get the ball rolling. And I think you'll notice a lot of improvements there. Anyway, whew, that could be a whole thing right there. So <laughs> anyway, I wish you all the best, uh, Mr. Taco Killer. And um, please... Do us all a favor and just draw. We we all need you. People that love comics need you to make comics. Kip Caparo asks, I would like to see more landscape. Doesn't seem like anyone is covering that. Uh, trees, grass, dirt, etc. Really enjoy your videos, by the way. Uh, okay, so thank you for bringing that up. I know it's not really a question, but uh, I do agree. Uh, I just did a quick search myself, and you're right. There's not really, if anything, out there. And I think the reason for that is it's sort of like... um. Going back into the fine art talk, comic book artists, you just need to know how to draw that stuff. And unless you're doing a, a comic book that takes place in the dirt everywhere, like when do you draw dirt? I can't think of the last time I had to draw dirt. I honestly can't. Uh, there was a Western comic I started for a little bit with a client, uh, and there was like dirt there. But it, you know what I mean? And what you end up doing. And this might just be the advice for you here. Uh, I might try to do a video on some of this stuff. To be honest with you, I don't think I, you need it. Uh, I'm just going to give you the what, what you need right now, in my opinion, is just copy other people's stuff. That's it. Uh, if you need to draw trees, I've done it a billion times. I need to draw trees. It's in a forest. I don't draw trees that often, so I'll grab my favorite comic book artist and a few other and just flip through and go, oh, that's how they kind of ink a tree, like leaves. Like You just, oh, these little diamond shapes or something, and it's that's how you build up your library. Like, let's be fair here, right? If you're a comic book artist and you need to be expected to draw everything, how can you draw everything if you haven't drawn it yet? So you're telling me we all have to sit back, come up with a checklist of things that we have to draw, which is everything, and then once you achieve that, then you can sit down and do it? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? And I'm not, I'm not uh, putting this towards you like, of course, you know? Uh, I'm just saying... There are things that you're going to come across that you don't draw, and you don't know how to draw until you're asked to draw it. Hey, draw a horse, man. If you've never drawn a horse, good luck. If you've never drawn an animal, good luck, right? Like, you got to learn this stuff as you go. Um, and that's sort of going back to the other question of fundamentals. Um, once you start getting a better grasp on fundamentals, you can start applying that to, like, everything you do. Uh, so figuring out how to draw an animal head or something like that, you can start manipulating, like, human skulls to kind of get that effect. Okay, so uh, I again, I just wanted to include it because I'm not sure if I'll, in, I'll have a video talking about this sort of stuff because it is one of those, it's so, a video on how to draw trees is probably pretty cool, but you're only going to look for that video if you need to draw a tree, right? And if that's the case, then it's something that's not really a fundamental thing because you're not a painter, you're a comic book artist. So if you need to draw trees, then you're going to start looking at trees and drawing them. Right? If you're in comics, you're probably doing something that you like. If you like fight scenes, you can probably just think of fight scenes off your head. If you like romance and people talking, you're probably going to be able to draw mannerisms and little like quirky twitches in people's faces and postures as they're walking and just ace it. But when somebody tells you to draw, I don't know, a car accident, you might be, ooh, okay, like now what do I do? Now I'm freaking out and production's slowing down big time. Right? So... Uh, just wrap it up. The advice I would say is literally look for that research as you need it. Um, if you're going into a project and you're, I'm hoping you read the script, 
you can see what you're going to need to draw before you get to it, which is great because then you can start doing the research before you draw, right? If it's car accidents and, you're, and you don't really draw cars very well, well, you might want to spend a night or two before you start production or uh, maybe the car accidents page 12. So you've got 12 days or however long it takes you to get to page 12. Maybe sneak in 10 minutes a night and just draw boxes of a car. You know, like there are ways to get around it. Um, but unfortunately, it's just draw, draw, draw. That's the answer to everything. So thanks, Kip. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going to take another quick drink of the coffee here. And we're going to start. There's only one question for the next video here, and that was the Dracula concept art video. Ah, tasty coffee. It's cold now, but, you know. Uh, okay, so Petri Pure. Uh, she asks, uh, I have a question. I have this strange problem in drawing in Manga Studio that whenever I try to draw a simple set of lines very quickly, some of them, if they seem too straight, they don't, they simply don't appear. Uh, only those curved ones are drawn. Have you happened to met with that problem before? Uh, okay, so thanks for the question, Petri. Uh, I have, and what she's talking about, just hopefully this is it. Um, sometimes Photoshop will do this. It's a little different, but if I just start, you know, like if I wanted to make like lines like this, but do it like real quick, right? So it's working here, but sometimes what Photoshop will do anyway is if I'm making quick lines and I go for another quick one, it'll put either like a connection line or what it'll do is I'll go like that and it'll just be like non-pressure sensitive brush and it'll, it'll, it's weird because what it's doing is it's, it, from what I understand anyway, and this is just a layman's way of saying it, is that it, it Photoshop can't tell or your computer's too slow that each hand stroke is going way too fast for that information to go back and forth. Sounds lame. I mean, it makes me sleep at night. <laughs> but for Manga Studio, I, the only time I came up with that was when I had a pen or brush that I was using and I had stabilization turned on. And for those of you that don't know, stabilization is this. So watch as I draw this curved line, right? It's pretty, you know, ugh. but maybe my hand moves like this. It's all jaggy. With stabilization on, I'm not going to be able to do it. You just got to use your imagination. It's like the... Per it's like the perfect curve. Like there's no jitters at all. Now... With stabilization on, again, if I started going like, just flying through these things, it might just go because I went too fast and make it straight. So that, just to quickly answer your question, might be your stabilization. And if that's the key, if that's the the case, you might have to either slow down how you draw, which eh, nobody wants to do that. If you don't slow down how you draw, uh, it might be just turning the stabilization on and off there. Okay, so I hope, hope that helps you out there. Uh, the next one is the Butcher King video. Uh, and Trory Incus asks, your line art looks so clean and crisp. Thank you. Uh, there's not much feathering going on. Are you using a Cintiq to draw in paint? Okay, so the reason I included this is because this question comes up quite a bit. Of like, hey John, you know, what, what, what stuff, what tools do you use? Um, I, I like knowing what tools other people use too. Uh, right now what I'm using, and I'll, I might talk about it in a second here, I don't know. Um, is I'm actually on my... Intuos tablet. Uh, I do normally use a Cintiq to draw. Um, a, because I paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> so I feel like I need to use it. Uh, and B, I do feel like, especially if you're doing comic book work or line art, it's a great tool to have if you can afford it because the learning curve is, to me anyway, it's much smaller than using a tablet. Uh, I've been using a tablet since, oh man, since uh, what? High school? When Photoshop came out, a buddy showed it to me. I had no idea what Photoshop was, but then I was like, oh, I could paint on this. Like, I, I hate paint. I hate, hate, hate painting with, like, oils and stuff like that. I just, it's not fun, it's boring, and I don't like it. <laughs> okay? But being in Photoshop or digital, I can just hit a button right here, and I can pretend that I'm doing it, right? So it's different. But, uh, yes, I'm using a... Intuos right now in Photoshop, it's more of a comfort thing. I have a standing desk set up right now. And if you guys wanted to get real ghetto and do it like I'm doing it, uh, and you guys could have a standing desk right now, hopefully, uh, all I have is a generic computer desk. It's just a desk. It doesn't really have any backing or shelves on it, just on, on the ground. And I got these two uh, nightstands that I bought from Walmart back in the day, and they're pretty, they're pretty gross looking and pretty ugly. And I just put two of them on top of my desk and I put my monitor on that and my keyboard. It's not ideal, but I am able to stand and draw. Uh, this is going into, if you guys were part of the, actually, uh, I don't know if it's uploaded yet, 
Um, but the live stream from last week, where I was talking about like I'm starting yoga, trying to just get some stretches going on. Get, I don't want to die from drawing. <laughs> Uh, I think it'd be an admirable thing to do, dying at my art table, but I don't want to die because I sat too much. That seems pretty lame, um, and I know there are tons of people that have had that happen to them. I, d I just don't want to be one if I can prevent it sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's why I'm getting into that, and the standing desk, it helps keep my energy-ish high. Uh, it doesn't make it as relaxing where it's like, okay, I get to just relax and sit down and draw, you know, that's cool. Uh, I did buy a stool. I found it at a, a value village for 20 bucks. Um, I have that right beside me here. If my feet start really hurting, I can just scoot it up there and just sit on it for a little bit and then jump back off. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Uh, the Cintiq, still love it. Still love it. I have the small 12 WX one, and I've always been considering upgrading to the big boy uh, but it costs so much money that it's always like a, that's the only reason why I don't and I know tons of people have posted like Yanovas and other things uh, and you guys have been great with that you've shown me or tried to show me videos of like how cool they are and here's a review and stuff I just I just not have not had the time um, so I apologize for that but uh, there's always things out there that you can try uh, if you pick up the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics, it, the, the inking, everything I'm doing right here, the inking, if you like this sort of look, check out that book. It's all in there. It's all in there for this sort of thing. Uh, one thing I am missing is I feel like the lines, I don't know, like I'm doing a little bit extra work when it gets to the inking. I don't know if that's true just yet. But uh, Freddy, what he uses in that is the bamboo, which is the cheapest Wacom you can get. Uh, and, you know, that's not saying, you know, oh, well, the guy works for DC Comics and he only, is work, only uses a bamboo, so bamboo is awesome. I still prefer the Intuos over the bamboo if you got the cash, especially if you're going to be doing coloring. But to be absolutely honest, if you're just doing black and white art, or even like gray, or even if you are coloring, the bamboo is fine. Uh, if you're doing comic book work, I think the average person's fine. Uh, I had this uh, when I went to college, this the Intuos, so you can take that for what it's worth. Okay, uh, so let me fill this in here. Uh, expand, da, 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 and fill. Ooh, look at all those blacks. Nice. So it's an interesting workflow when you're going here. Like, you look at this, and it's like, uh, there's a lot of lines and stuff. But, like, look at her breasts. They're kind of, like, gross looking. But once you start adding, like, some shadows, it's funny. This, this method of working here, like, look at this character here in this panel. Like, these lines are kind of, like, I don't know. They're, they're, they're okay, but I feel like I could just go to Manga Studio and make them better, which is weird. And one of the things Freddie talks about is, uh, how did he word it? Doing this keeps your lines honest. <laughs> like, I can't necessarily go in here and cheat things. Like, if you look at this character here, let me just turn the inks off, okay? So I put some folds in the character. I was actually using a, pre a pressure-sensitive brush, so you can, s you can see them here, right? But... I can't just jump into inks and fill this black. Uh, that's that's the idea behind this workflow. So I have to sort of draw out, even if I know like right here, like near the crotch area is all black, I still have to have it in there. Whereas I would probably just do like a, a pencil stage. Uh, you guys have seen me do the workflow. And then I'll just grab like the Maru brush in Manga Studio and just, just draw. And I know that's black, so I can just carve it the shape. And there's nothing wrong with it at all. It actually speeds things up a bit. Uh, but like I said uh, in the book, he talks about this keeping your work honest. And I'm finding it is. And then when you just throw the inks in there, all of a sudden, like those lines don't look that bad. They might be a little thick. So that might be something you need to get used to. Uh, you know, it's your call. Anyway, back to you guys' questions. Uh, so we've only got a few left here. Uh, so this one is from the live stream dated October 22nd. And Cloud Yo asks, Hey, Jonathan, I just wanted to point out how useful these uh, live sessions are uh, for many reasons. Uh, well, thank you. But what I feel is important is that with all the content online with sped up video, I'm afraid people might get the wrong idea of how long it actually takes to draw something. Well, thanks, Cloud. That's half the reason why I'm... Uh, doing this at regular speed. Now, I am talking, so this is taking much longer than it normally would. Uh, but, I don't know. Do, do uh, you guys let me know in the comments. If, if Do you guys, I don't want to say if you care, but is it a big deal to you guys uh, when you go to look at other artists' channels and videos and stuff, when you're going to learn or you just want to watch somebody draw something cool? I don't know. Does it bother you that it's sped up? Um... 
The only thing that I'm like, I don't, I'm not really concerned myself. It's more of like a it makes sense for me to do it because I can't. If I was doing a video, they they would just be so long that uh, when you start getting into the YouTube stuff, <laughs> retention. If you don't know what retention is, retention is keeping somebody's attention, keeping users engaged. So this video here, all the live streams I have, the amount of hits they get is fine, but if I look into the analytics of how long somebody watches, so in this video it's about, I don't know, how long we're going to go here for, an hour and a half? I don't know how long this is. Probably 10 to 20 minutes is the average. You're lucky to get 10 minutes of people's attention. So when you draw fast, that's uh, more than likely the reason why people do that is I can come in, I've done it too, I've gone to videos and I watch and it's like, okay, you know, and I'll just go right to the end. I just want to see how it looks. I want to see certain parts of the stages, you know, I want to see, okay, so that's what they did for their gesture, that's what they did for their tight lines, you know, all that stuff. Um, whereas, if they do upload a video that's like mine, like an hour, and there's no content, like, yeah, I'm talking, I might, I might listen to it in the background, but if I just wanted to see, like, uh, somebody penciling, and I'm like, you know, I want to see how they render and stuff. I'm just scrubbing through the video. Okay. So right here, all I did is, you can tell, I just lowered the opacity. So I could still see the lines underneath, um, because I don't want the shadow to still hit this as well. Um, we're going to do like another one here. Sort of like a reflective light in a way. I just want the boots to be kind of sort of sh uh, shiny. At least have some sort of feeling of shininess. Oops. Just connect these lines here. And we'll cut that out. Okay, so let me just get in there. Uh, okay, so thanks for the question there, Cloud. Uh, the next one is from the live stream dated November 19th by Harold George. I believe I actually, yeah, I did answer your question here on Google+, Plus, but I just wanted to ask it because, or read it here because I think other people might have that question too. Uh, with such level of detail on the backgrounds, uh, which you love, which is <laughs> great, thank you, uh, are you able to meet client deadlines? Now, that's something that, uh, uh, it's, it's a personal problem that I have of uh, trying to hit deadlines that I give people. Uh, it, it's, you've heard me talk about it a bunch of times. It's not something I'm proud of. Um, I don't try to miss deadlines on people. I don't. I think it's very unprofessional. But things happen, and you can't beat yourself up over it. As long as you work harder and harder and get better at it, yada yada yada, right? But uh, so to quickly show you guys like the backgrounds here. So the background here in this one looks. It might look like it took a long time. I don't know. It really didn't take long at all. Uh, you check out my live streams where I go over this. It's just paths in Photoshop that you stroke. That's it. That's all it is. Um, so those sort of things don't take very long. Uh, in Manga Studio, if I had to draw that, it would take a while. So yes, it, it would definitely affect your deadline. It depends on how how quickly you draw. Some people just knock out backgrounds like they're going out of style, but they struggle with uh, anatomy, you know? Some people are really good at anatomy, but they struggle with backgrounds, so it slows them down. you got to kind of pick your battles. Uh, when it comes to deadlines, one of the biggest things that slows me down is my inability sometimes to just go, all right, go. Like, uh, let's look at this background. I could leave it and let the colorist go in there and fix it all. You know, like add the which side has the shading and stuff. But the artist side of me is like, uh, I cringe at it. But I should do it <laughs> because... Uh, if we're skipping deadlines or if we're way past things, it, I guess it depends really on the pressure of the project. If it's really, really back behind, like I, I most likely just heavily rely on the colorist to do a lot of the work here. Um, right now, like let's just say I was ahead of schedule or I was on schedule, this drawing right here, I would be in here just rendering the sweet love and, you know, like just, oh man, I just want to get in here just, yeah, just render. Oh, look, look how cool that looks. You just keep running. I'm going to leave it in there. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I'd be going in there doing all that stuff. So, um, uh, And Vignesh Raja, hopefully I said your name right, uh, can you suggest a good book about how to draw cars and motorbikes? Like there's lots of books on anatomy, figure drawing, and perspective, but I'm still searching on books and topics I mentioned before. Okay, so I'm going to put a shout out to all the, the people that are watching right now. If you guys have recommendations 
uh, for Vignesh of of that talking about cars and stuff. I know there's a, a lot of cartooning books or uh, cartoon style artists like from Mad Magazine and stuff like that that have some tutorials online and you can look around and just do some searching that have an illustrated way of drawing cars and stuff and there's a whole especially cars there's so many different ways to draw it you can draw it like the, the sports car style where everything's all like curved lines then there's also like the box style which I usually do that one um, lately I've been watching Feng Zhu F-E-N-G-Z-H-U on YouTube and he has a lot of stuff where he calls them hard surface and soft surface I believe hard surface would be like cars and things and he'd show you how you draw that um, and just doing some of that sort of instruction and applying it to what I need has helped me out um, because you know it is quick to just go into Google SketchUp and just you know pull a car out and then draw over it and put all the detail that you want but sometimes you want to be able to just tr draw those things right like you don't necessarily have to go in there and swipe everything all the time uh, no we don't want that there okay so unfortunately I don't have an answer for you there's nothing that I have uh, that I've looked to find those things out I've always had to look when I needed them sort of like the discussion we had before about the environment stuff <sighs> okay so we've got one last question and then I think we're about done so if you're still here thank you so much really appreciate it and this one I put a call out on Twitter and Facebook on my fan page uh, because today I had the time to square away to do this so uh, the question we had there was from Alex Fernandez do you charge extra if you get a script from a client and have to design the characters and worlds they live in? Uh, that's actually a really good question, Alex. When I first started doing comics for people, uh, that was like part of the project. You know, uh, the earliest one that I did was a book called Cord and Harley. And if my information's wrong on this, then I, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but um, in that project there, there was a lot of artwork already done for characters. A lot of the main characters were already established and stuff. Uh, but there was characters that definitely needed design, and I just went ahead and did them uh, because I needed them. You know, And there's been tons of times where I pick up a comic book or uh, I get a script offered to me, and I read it, and it's like, okay, cool. All right, so do you have any of these characters designed? And the answer, more often than not, is no. Um, and I would just design them for free. Since working for quite a while on this stuff, uh, I hardly do anything for free anymore. Sometimes I might do, if it's just like design two characters, I might let it slide if there's a lot of work. If it's like an eight-page project and they need me to design new X-Men, no, I'm I'm charging you for concept development, all that stuff, because it is. like the Concept art is, <laughs> think about this. This is how important it is, okay? Somebody wants you to illustrate a story for them. Great. Somebody wants you to, they want to do the next X-Men, the new X-Men that they want to make, their own, their own superheroes. Great, more power to them. But when you're long gone, if somebody else picks up the pace after you, or maybe this blows up, and there's merchandising, and there's all sorts of things that it could lead to, right? Chances are they're all based off of your design. And whether you believe it or not, design is massive. Design in today's world is huge. It might even be the most important thing. It's what grabs people to a cover. You know, like if I asked you guys to draw uh, Worlds in Peril, what I'm doing right now, um, and this character here wasn't designed, this fire fireman character. Uh, and it's like, all right, so we've got six characters. One's dressed as a fireman. Uh, we've got a couple more. There's like a, an Iceman kind of character, a Wolverine. Uh, we want you to just go ahead and uh, draw those characters on a cover. Uh, you know, like they're just jumping out at you. But those characters aren't designed yet, so you're going to have to design them in a cover. You could literally just draw six people in spandex, generic spandex with like the boot cut off, the arm cut off, uh, like the X-Men, the original X-Men, uh, with just a, like the underwear and everything, and just put like, give them two colors, and it'd be fine. But if you spend some time developing characters or trying to go back to some of my stuff, I'm not saying I'm, I'm fantastic at this stuff, but I do have tons of concept art videos on my channel. Look on YouTube for concept art. There's... Video games, movies, they pay big bucks to have concept artists invent characters that do not exist. And there's a reason for that. Because they can't do it. That's what they, they're coming to you for. Like this character here, you might not like him. They might have too much stuff going on. You don't know. But I had to design the whole character. There's things on here that, yes, a fireman has. Right? 
I added things like these double pockets, uh, the style of belt, uh, to get the ribbing all on here. I also included it here as the trim. Uh, you know, whether you like it or not, the double uh, collar. I added a flashlight here on the side. Designed this like just stuff. The gloves, just little things that might help the helmet too. Little things that might differentiate this character from like a generic look. It took time to get here. It didn't. It wasn't just like first pass go. I believe there's three different designs for this character. This is the one that got picked. You know, and you damn right you better start charging people for that. Um, and if they're gonna come to you and say, no, 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 go ahead, we're just gonna no, like other people, they wouldn't, they don't charge. Well, then go to those people. I would recommend turning down a job, unless it's I don't know, like I was gonna say if, unless it's Marvel or DC or something, um, because I do know the new Ninja Turtles, the artist that's on that, he designs a lot of the new characters. But I don't know if they give him a design rate, you know. Um, I, I that I don't know. What I'm talking about is the indie front. If you're working on a project like this. You're damn right you better start charging people stuff. As for the world, that might get into a little crazy town. Like, unless it's like we need mushroom people in mushroom land. And you have to design mushroom land, charge them. That is massive. Because you better believe that they're going to want revisions. <laughs> okay? So charge them for it. Uh, look online for how much you would charge somebody to do concept art if you've never done it before. Those resources are out there. But don't shortchange yourself. Don't do work for free. Stop working for free. You got to eat, feed yourself. And the biggest thing, the biggest lie people will tell you, I fell for it when I was starting to, and you might still be falling for it now and, you know, whatever, but it's, hey, if you do this for me, it's free, but it could get you exposure. Tell them, have a nice day, see you later. Because you can, you can make your own story. It might suck, but you're not, you're doing it for the art. You're trying to get more artwork out there, right? If you're going through these other people that are giving you a script, they're trying to get notice for writing. Right? So you're still trying to get noticed for drawing. So draw what you're excellent at. Draw a five-page story or 22-page story of just fights. That's what you want to get picked up for. You don't need to work for free. <laughs> okay, so in this case, if you're still doing this stuff, it's portfolio work. Portfolio work's got to be free anyway, unless you're using client work. But even then, unless it's like, if this character here was for Ninja Turtles, or if Worlds in Peril blows up, then it's going to go in my portfolio. But for now, it won't. Because the licensed property doesn't mean anything to people. Nobody knows who these characters are. So there's no difference from this or if I just do Wolverine on here where people know. Or I draw Jessup King, one of my own characters. Nobody knows who they are. So you may as well draw what you're best at. Okay? So I know that went uh, <laughs> everywhere. But I just want to say thank you guys once again. Hope you enjoyed the video. I really dig these Q&A sessions. Um, Drawing and talking, I felt like I deviated a bit, so we might try it again. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. But if you had a question that you'd like answered, and it wasn't answered in this or the previous videos, by all means, please just post it in the comment bar below. I really appreciate it. And don't be shy about asking questions, you guys. If you got a question, I can guarantee you somebody else has a question. And if you're the one that asks it, then you're helping a bunch of people out too, okay? And if you guys wanted to head on over to patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector, you guys can head over there, and there's some, uh, some things that you guys can uh, throw some money at me if you like. And there's also some services that I offer there, too, uh, if you guys might be interested in that. And uh, I keep saying it. I just want to keep planting that seed with my finger with you guys. Is I'm still working on the how to make a mini comic tutorial. It's taken some time. I apologize. But that's just it's the way it goes. But it will be made. So don't you worry about it. Um, so you guys can keep looking forward to that. And if you wanted to head over to the live streams, those are every week. Wednesday, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow me on Facebook, on my fan page, or Twitter, uh, Google Plus, I think, as well, all on my website, jonathanrector.com. And I put out a little, like, hey, guys, show's starting up soon, if you guys are interested in that, okay? And if you can't make it to that, uh, you can always check out the recorded version that gets uploaded uh, Sundays, I believe. Saturday or Sunday, whenever you get the chance to. I'm taking off. i got to finish the rest of this page today. But, again, thank you guys once again so, so much. Love you guys. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. And I'll see you soon. Bye.